Terry for putting that together, and Toy and Phyllis were part of that video, so thank you for participating in that. Mm -hmm. So, as I mentioned, uh, I'm from Pride Action Tank, or PAT as we love to call it, because um, everything comes in acronym. Um, <laughs> and PAT is under the AIDS Foundation of Chicago, or AFC, as we love to call it. So Pride Action Tank was founded, or, or launched, um, it'll be two years in October, which is hard to believe. Really? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, and a lot has happened in those two years. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of background about Pride Action Tank, it really, the genesis of it comes out of the fight for marriage equality, um, because there were a group of us who worked on that, um, large, uh, primarily Tracy Bain, uh, who is uh, <laughs> the center of many great things happening in Chicago's mm -hmm. LGBTQ community. Um, she really wanted to kind of think about ways of harnessing all the momentum that was coming out of the marriage fight, uh, including just people's desire to be engaged in some way. And we kind of kicked this around for, for a while, trying to figure out what that could be. I think uh, we were even thinking of something called the uh, Bayard Rustin Institute at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were many iterations as we were thinking about it. And um, one of the things that happened shortly after the marriage bill was signed in Illinois in 2013 is that uh, we moved some energy to working with LGBTQ youth experiencing homelessness. And this was while I was still at Affinity. Tracy asked me to be the summit director uh, for that summit on LGBTQ youth homelessness in 2014. And it was structured to be uh, a multiple day brainstorming kind of uh, session. The first day was all LGBTQ youth who were, were currently or had at some point experienced homelessness. And there were um, nearly 100 young people who came to this. And we wanted to make sure that they were able to fully participate. So we make sure, made sure that they had the supports that they needed, uh, gift cards, transit cards, food, um, clothing. We made arrangements with the, the handful of shelters that serve youth, particularly LGBTQ youth, to hold some spaces for young people uh, in case they got out of the, the summit after the, the cutoff for receiving new folks. So we were really, really intentional about how they could participate. Um, and that, in the second day, we had service providers, um, researchers, policy makers, other folks who touch the issue but aren't necessarily living it. And for both days, we um, focused the conversation on several different issue areas and asked three key questions in every single summit in every single session, and it had something to do, what are you experiencing now? What do you think, uh, if all things uh, were, were perfect, the money weren't an issue, what would you want to see happen? Mm -hmm. And then what are your ideas about how to bridge that gap? And so we did that with the youth, we did that with the service providers and others. And then that Sunday, there was a group of us who thought we were gonna do a four hour exercise of going through the notes but there were like 24 sessions of notes to go through. And <laughs> Whoa. we were at the AIDS Foundation of Chicago, which has been critical to uh, Pat even before it was Pat. Um, mm -hmm. And we went through those notes from about 9 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock at night. And we had told some of the facilitators of the sessions, Imani was one of them, because <laughs> she mm -hmm. was new to BYC at that point. So there's lots of connections here. We told them ahead of time uh, at their training, we're going to do a report back <coughs> on the Monday after the summit, and you're not going to have a lot of time mm -hmm. to review this. So we had a volunteer who um, put together a PowerPoint presentation and we sent it to folks probably 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And mm -hmm. at 9 o'clock the next morning, <laughs> we did a report back uh, with the media, with funders, with anyone who had been to the previous two days um, sessions, and to folks who just hadn't been at all, and this was the one day that they could come. And the um, 
some of the facilitators or note takers actually did those presentations, and Monty came up with her own cute presentation that she insisted that we use instead of the standard one that we had, and yours was better. <laughs> <laughs> Ours was bare bones. <laughs> and, and we did that report back, and we also included um, uh, young people in part of the report back, and one of them uh, shared a spoken word piece where they talked about carrying everything on their back every day and just the, the stigma and anxiety of doing that and uh, even putting uh, their backpack behind a dumpster from time to time so that they could go to school or go for a job interview and just all the, the just the mental health and stress that, that that caused that young person. And because there were funders in the room, they heard that piece and they thought, huh, storage. Maybe that's something we could work on. And two or three funders came together. They funded a study. We were able to employ a couple of young people, uh, supervised by someone uh, who had worked at BYC before. And they researched storage options for people experiencing homelessness all over the country and came up with a set of recommendations for Chicago, which they shared to a room full of funders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as a result, they were funded for a um, $250,000 pilot study uh -huh. that has resulted in over uh, 250 lockers being installed at youth shelters across the city, of which there are not that many, mm -hmm. um, along with um, some policy ideas and best practices and some consultation for those service providers so that they are able to provide a whole experience around shelter. And um, it is so successful that the city of Chicago has been seriously looking at this at, for adult shelters. Mm -hmm. So I went into all that detail about the Youth Summit because it really informed how Pride Action Tank came to do its work. Um, among those things is centering the voices of the people who uh, are most impacted by the issue that we're working on and also bringing multiple people into the space together who are not always in the space together to talk about the, a particular issue but who work on some piece of it together. And um, so we've used that model for a number of activities and I should back up and say we continue to action the projects that came out of the summit. We didn't want to have just a list of recommendations, like often is what often happens, and then that's lovely, and people go off and do their thing. Um, we're actually doing um, what was suggested in the 70-page document that is available on the website. Um, so there's been the storage um, initiative. We are currently working on creating the first tiny home development in Chicago oh, and it will be focused on youth who are experiencing homelessness and our hope is that this pilot will open the door for other uh, tiny home projects in Chicago. Uh, Chicago has a lot of vacant land, <laughs> a lot of opportunity to create um, these kinds of communities. It's not for everybody and we're not suggesting that tiny homes replace um, high rises or anything like that. We're just saying this needs to be another option for folks uh, where it makes sense. Um, we've also had a summit on um, uh, homelessness on college and university campuses, which a lot of people don't think about, but there are a lot of young people and not so young people who are making real choices between buying books and paying rent. And uh, you know from time to time we see stories about somebody at Harvard who's actually living in a car and is a straight A student. Well, you know, the scenario is not um, that it's uncommon not that we should not think about it. So those are some of the things on the youth side that we've been doing. And because our issue areas, and I should back up and tell you what they are, they're aging, financial security, health, housing, safety, and youth many of which overlap, we're very aware of that. <laughs> um, these issue areas are very much informed by the LGBTQ needs assessment that was done by the Morton Group in 2012 um, as the Chicago Community Trust was uh, preparing 
um, for the, the LGBT fund, which I'm not sure if it exists anymore. I think they were going to have They're three rounds of money. They still Oh, mm -hmm. they ran out of money? Well, they allocated the first one. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Sure. And I think that's because they were getting pressure because people knew about this. Like, you got to release the body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the findings in that, that needs assessment was that young people and older adults in the LGBTQ community are experiencing some of the same things, having some of the same challenges. Some of them uh, among, among them are isolation. Uh, from the rest of their community in addition to their families of origin. Also um, issues around just not being sure what benefits are available to them. Affordable housing is a big one. So there's a lot of um, crossover in terms of challenges. And so when we were deciding what the next big issue area was going to be that we took on, a year and a half, at that time probably a year, less than a year into the founding of the Pride Action Take, we said let's look at LGBTQ aging. That's a bigger umbrella than LGBTQ youth homelessness, but let's just see what the issues are. And so like with the Youth Summit, we wanted to center the voices of LGBTQ older adults. And normally the person who would start this part of our presentation would be Don Bell. Um, an LGBTQ older adult who was in one of the videos. And he would do a really nice job of kind of setting the, the framework for why this is important. He's not here. I know I'm among the, the age range for LGBTQ older adults, but I'm not as eloquent about it as he is. So I'm going to skip that part. But needless to say, um, it was very important that we have um, a day that was focused on older adults. And then the second day, like with the Youth Summit, had service providers and clinicians and others. And they all had the same issue areas to talk about and the same set of questions. And so that's kind of what we're going to go over today. So uh, the cannot say enough about sponsors. <laughs> because our summits are either free or extremely low cost compared to other all-day uh, kinds of events that folks go to. Um, so in addition to our, hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go through all these. Let's go, 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 go back. Let's go back. Let's okay. go back. Okay. <laughs> we have to say the words. <laughs> <laughs> so our lead sponsor was Lambda Legal, who um, jumped on this right away. Uh, aging is an issue that they work on. A lot of people don't know. That, but they do a lot of work in this area. Um, our host sponsors were AARP and Affinity. So AARP hosted the two uh, full days of the summit, and then Affinity, as Imani mentioned, uh, hosted the uh, opening reception before the summit started. Affinity also kicked in some funds on this because Imani was thinking about doing an aging summit, and I knew that. So, you know, <laughs> we're working same. together. Yes. <laughs> Wicked <laughs> City Times was our media sponsor, and they've done a really good job of, of covering this for us and are covering it right now. And then we had other sponsors who um, helped defray the costs. Um, AIDS Foundation of Chicago, Chicago Foundation for Women, uh, Renewal Care, and SAGE. And um, they made it, having these sponsors made it possible for the first day to be free. Uh, and for the second day, uh, to be really low cost, I think it was like $35, $45. And that included food, which a lot of places, they don't feed you even for more than that. Okay. And then we had a whole host of community partners who helped us get the word out on this. And also provided volunteers, including um, those folks who were uh, kind of facilitating the discussion and helping us run smoothly. Okay. And we have planning committee. Hallelujah. Because uh, <laughs> this is not... Pride Action Tank is two people. <laughs> and a wonderful advisory council that has about 30 folks on it. Two of them are here. Is there anybody else? Yeah, two of them are here. And um, so we can't do what we do without working committees and uh, other volunteers. So Jean was on the planning committee, Gloria Allen, I know some of you know her, Don Bell, who couldn't be here, Jackie Boyd, who I know many of you know. Um, Lynn Hall, Britta Larson from the Center on uh, Halstead, Angelica Martinez, who was a student who graduated before she could actually <laughs> be a part of the summit. 
uh, uh, Professor Jesus Ramirez Valle, mm -hmm. who has a book out called oh. Queer Aging. Uh, so folks should check that out. Uh, Molly was on the planning committee, Cynthia Tucker from AFC, Terry and Serena. And we had volunteers to uh, facilitate and uh, take notes for us. Okay. So, we're going to go into more detail in just a bit, but there were some big things that came out of um, reviewing the notes. And I should say, um, there was a group of us that looked at the notes a couple of Fridays ago. We kind of went through every single page <laughs> wow. and organized them and uh, to look for, for themes and, and all of that so that we can, it, it would make sense when, <laughs> when we talk to you today. And, and I want to share some quotes that came out of the summit too. So one of them is, there are two extremes. Seniors all have the same needs, mm -hmm. but then LGBT seniors have some really unique needs. We aren't all the same. Some of the takeaways are LGBTQ older adults want a range of options uh, when it comes to housing, and that includes LGBTQ specific housing, but also opportunities to age in place. LGBTQ older adults want to be strong advocates, we heard this a lot, both for themselves and their loved ones in interactions with service providers and caretakers, but also engagement when it comes to elected officials. LGBTQ older adults want to stay connected to younger people through intergenerational programming, services, and friendships. Uh, they want service providers and the general public to stop making assumptions about their ability to speak for themselves, whether or not they're sexually active, uh, their proficiency in technology, family status, gender identity, sexual orientation, and a whole bunch of other things. And related to that, they want to be visible, they want to be seen, and they want to be part of the fabric of the LGBTQ community as well as the broader society. And despite the digital divide, um, there were many opportunities mentioned to use technology as a tool for both community building and connection, as well as for providing services to LGBTQ adults. <coughs> faith communities was mentioned a lot. Um, affirming faith communities, uh, folks felt, are underutilized. Um, uh, they could be spaces for services and community connections. Uh, provided that there is not a commitment to faith uh, as part of the requirement for programming. LGBTQ older adults and service providers stressed the need for navigators. This came up over and over again to guide people through the complex systems of Medicaid, private insurance, uh, housing, medical and legal documents, all kinds of stuff. And to the extent possible, L LGBT older adults want one-stop shopping options. They can be digital or in person uh, for both services and paperwork. So now we're going to move into um, the discussion, the report back, uh, and go deeper in what was reported to us. You can go to the next slide. And so we've broken this discussion into three themes. And Jackie is going to hand out a form, because you're going to have an opportunity to provide some additional feedback. We're going to, um, my committee members are going to share with you uh, what was told to us. Um, and we want you to take some time, not, not right now. <laughs> we want you to take some time to jot down your own thoughts, and then we're going to discuss them as a group or list them as a group. So one of the things was just this lack of knowledge about or access to resources. Another one was a desire for social supports in community building. And then the last thing was needed improvements to institutions and structures. So I didn't tell you this, but you're doing the first one. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> right. Does everybody have a form? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ask you yourself ready. Does everybody have a pen? Um, does everyone have a pen? Yeah. It's coming around. I will say one of the um, really great things that, that um, I feel like Pat sort of learned 
Um, Kim had mentioned that I had done something different when I when I did a report back. I did something that was, um, I made it up, but it was um, a bricks, a balloons, and, an, and a windows. And so the ideas are bricks are things that we're not doing well, balloons are things that we are doing well as providers, and the windows are opportunities for us to do better. And that's actually what we're going to be doing here, not using those things, but you're going to have an opportunity to give, give um, uh, give us this information so that we can incorporate it. And the idea there was to to have this conversation to talk about what we're doing well, what we're not doing well, and what we could be doing better because I was presenting to folks and I didn't have an opportunity to get information back from folks. And so um, this is actually uh, a really great learning opportunity for, for us having done having done it this way but now also getting to, to hear from you all. So this is very, very exciting. Uh, hope this gives you a couple minutes to think about yours. <laughs> Sorry we are whispering, I was getting my instructions. I didn't have the opportunity to come to the first uh, report out, so I, I'm learning this as, as you are. So again, I'm Serena Worthington and I work for SAGE and I was on the planning committee, very excited. Um, I'm saying that mostly just for the record. Um, one thing that I wanted to say about this process, um, to describe it a little bit further was they took every single comment that was written in these little breakout sessions so people had a chance to speak intimately, speak one-on-one, -on -one. people tended to be more candid in those environments and Kim and Jackie had cut them all out, the little strips of paper we literally moved around and put them under these themes. Mm -hmm. So you may think, why did they put that there? And I want to point out what we did to decide where things went. When we weren't sure, we went back to the source material and the context. So we were really trying to figure out what the intention was, rather than this room full of people after the fact trying to read something into it. So um, we did the best we could. There may be things where you feel like it, it might fit better somewhere else, but we, we tried to find the intention and the, um, the spirit behind the statement. So there's going to be three slides in total. The last one will have some specific questions for you. Um, so these are literally statements that people made in these small bit breakout groups, that, but then were grouped under this major theme of access to resources. Um, I'll read the quote. There's so much I don't know. Personally, there's a generation or two that is lost. There aren't many gay men that I can talk to, so I'm winging this aging thing. So. Can folks see this, or what it, is it helpful to have it read out loud? Yeah, please. It's okay. helpful to have it read out loud. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's not as boring. Can people hear? Do, you need, do we need a mic? Would that be helpful? No. Uh, I okay. I can hear. Okay. Yeah. I'm an audio learner as well, so that's helpful to, to hear that other people are. So navigating paperwork and resources is very challenging. Services are needed to help people age in place. Does everybody know what that term means? No. Okay, so aging in place. I'll give you sort of a, a casual definition, which would be, me, be that I live in my house and I want to stay in my house. I don't want to have to move when I need more support or help. So aging in place means that I can get, I can get old, I can grow old and die there without having to move and change my accommodations just because I need other things there. So aging in place usually refers to what needs to be brought in to assure that I can do that in some cases. Services are needed to help people age in place. How can resources and information be shared and services be matched with the people who need them? Need one-stop shop for broader aging and LGBTQ specific services. Need to improve access to technology and leveraging that technology to connect to older adults and provide services. Questions on this one? Okay, go to page two. Potential solutions. So these were ones where statements where somebody actually said something positive that sounded like a solution and we grouped it as such. And then I think we did maybe a little tiny bit of editorializing um, and labeled things as solutions. Hire navigators to help people know what resources are available to them, such as transportation, meals, insurance coverage, medical, etc. Have volunteers or contract with groups like trans tech social enterprises for tech training and support. Post mobile, regularly scheduled clinics with LGBTQ Bar Association and other lawyers and students to help with legal documents. Have workshops on communal living, such as the Golden Girls or Village Model. Are people familiar with the Golden Girls? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any LGBTQ person who's not familiar with <laughs> Develop and maintain a resource list. Utilize shared car services like Uber or Lyft to increase access to services. Any questions on any of that? Okay, let's go to the next one. 
So we have some questions for all y'all. Um, and did you, are you breaking into small groups or is this a small No, no, group? this is, well, so actually we're going to give people about three minutes okay. uh, to write down on your form uh, some, what comes to mind for you, uh, given these questions, and then we're going to share. So the questions, what other solutions might there be? What resources slash assets are currently available? To help us fill in the gaps or identify things out there that you know there are possible solutions that we didn't get to. Could you give me a magazine? Thank I you. Got. Anybody else need a backup so, for their paper? So we've gone back to the concerns and issues slide so folks can see mm -hmm. what those were. Thank you. If anybody wants us to toggle over to the possible solutions slide, we can do that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. we, went back, part of what you just said? we went back to the concerns and issues slide so, so people can oh. refer to it. Okay. But if Thank you want you. us to toggle to that other slide, we're happy to do that at some point. And we'll you have three minutes. minutes. I have a feeling she's going to keep us to three minutes. I am. 